in their 30s. Annie and Bill. This story is fake. There is no 30-year-old man named Bill left in the United States of America. If they said a young couple in their 30s, Annie and Will, I would buy it. Will seems contemporaneous, but there is no man in his 30s going, yeah, my name is Bill. Maybe in his 130s. We are running, look at the graph. In like 1970, we had bills coming out of our whatever, man. Now we, do, we had jobs, cash, and hope. 20 years later, no jobs, no hope, no cash, and no bills. I work with a lot of bills. You would, do, could you pay my telephone bills? Anyway, my neighbors are a young couple from the 30s. Annie and Bill, they had a baby a couple months ago. The baby is called Cornelius. The baby was named Methuselah. The baby came home last month after three months in the hospital. My wife is friendly with Annie. We can't have children, so whenever we have a neighbor with a baby, my wife makes friends with them. A little weird. Like, I get it, but a little weird. That's like, oh, they just had a baby. Let's befriend them. Definitely strange. We have my mom staying with us as she's no longer able to live independently. My mom has complained several times she can hear the baby crying, especially at night. My wife says the baby has a bad reflux and they are trying to deal with it. The baby screams several times a day. It's awful listening to the poor thing cry for so long. It does feel like they aren't dealing with the baby as quickly as they should be. Yep, you're, you got a problem. You have, you've, you've crossed the line. There's only one way to make your baby stop crying reliably and they will send you to prison for employing it. You could do, you could alleviate it. Trust me when I say that if, if it's loud for you, it's loud for the people that are actually in their damn house. Obviously, you think they're not troubleshooting it? They're just like, oh, I'm so sick of this baby. They're doing something. They're very aware. The baby screamed for 10 minutes solid the other night. My wife says the baby screams when they bathe it. And as Annie has told her, the baby does not like being bathed. Baby's always crying and it's frustrating, especially when mom needs peace and quiet to recover from surgery. Listen, I get that it's frustrating. I'm sure it's also frustrating that like you want to fucking like fly like a bird, but gravity's holding you down to the rock surface that we live on on planet Earth. Sure, it's disappointing that there's not like a button on your solar plexus that you can press when you're hungry that makes you not feel hungry for a little. Just like a snooze button on hunger where you could be like, don't worry, I'm going to get lunch. I just need to finish this email real quick. Boop. But unfortunately, this is the world we live in where, you know, that shit is science fiction and babies also cry and there's not that much you could do about it. I'm not saying you can't be frustrated, but there's like there is no upstream problem or upstream solution. You can't be like, have you considered feeding? Have you considered feeding the baby? Have you considered picking the baby up and rubbing his back? Me with zero parenting advice? Have you played some music that the baby finds soothing? I just thought that I would pop in and be completely useless for a minute. There's some downstream solutions. You could buy earplugs. You could move, for sure. But like, this is it. Listen. I know it sucks, but it's just kind of, it's the damn, it's the way of the world, man. If you want people out there to be like, you know, cooking your French fries and stuff like that, making your coffee in 17 years, you got to deal with them crying when they're, you know, learning how to be a human being. It's the way of the damn world. Anyway, sorry. Since the baby has come home, there is no longer any room on our street during the day as we have on-street parking. Does the baby drive a Chevy Tahoe? I don't understand. Since the baby has come home, there is no longer any room on our street during the day as we have on-street parking. This is making it difficult to get mom to appointments as she can't walk to the end of the street to get in her car. We also can't park in the middle of... Yeah, I'm aware you can't park in the middle of the road... Obviously, it's not my suggestion here. It can take over 10 minutes to get her in the car due to mobility issues. There's always been at least one empty bay outside our house, but now it is always occupied by someone from their families or one of the other healthcare professionals involved in the baby's care. 
it can, this can't be real. There is no way there is a grown man who is like, I can't, I'm struggling to take my mom to the doctor because there's always a doctor taking care of a baby outside of my house. What do you think that maybe like the baby, the baby doctor should get the parking spot 50% of the time and you should get the parking spot the other 50% of the time? Also, this is very, like, I, I, I understand the frustration. Don't get me wrong. But like this shit comes up in Vancouver all the time. There's like once a month on r slash Vancouver, there's a post that's like, uh, a guy came to me when I was in my car and said, you can't park here. This is my house. Do I have to move? And everybody's like, fucking no. If you, you know, if you live in an area where you don't have a driveway and there's street parking, you don't get the parking spot in front of your house. It's just, you know, it, it, it's damn. Co Listen, can I tell you? I don't know if I should admit this. Sometimes, you know, if we're going to like Van Dusen Botanical Gardens, basically, I'm saying if you live in Shaughnessy, fuck you. I don't listen to your damn rules. No sign is going to tell me what to do. I'm going to Van Dusen Botanical Gardens. You know, it's the Festival of Lights. It's the Japanese uh, Sakura Blossoms or something like that. It, the parking is all fucked up. I drive into Shaughnessy. It's the rich go fuck yourself neighborhood where they're like, no, never raise our property taxes, even if it will build 100 schools. All the side streets say you need to have a permit to park here unless you're the homeowner. I just fuck it. I find the first spot. I put that shit in park. I walk to the damn Van Dusen Botanical Gardens. They can drive around the block if they want. You're not using the spot? I'm, I'm taking the damn spot. Who cares? You think, I, you think I'm going to let a... Listen, I pay for parking if I park on the street. It funds civic services like paying for the parking attendants who give people tickets that don't pay for parking. Me parking in front of somebody's house? Who knows? Who's to say I'm not the owner except for the owner? But I don't know. I've never been punished yet. I'm just saying, I don't buy this street parking stuff. You won't? It's a fake rule? That's what I'm saying. So sometimes I'll see a sign that's like local traffic only. I'm like, well, I'm local traffic, bitch. I need to be here. <laughs> I, I need to go, I'm, for temporarily, I'm local traffic. I need to be on this road to get to another road. So sorry, here I go. Don't worry, I won't hit anything while I'm on the road, but like, chill out. Anyway. I, by the way, they can be frustrated, that's fine, and they have a valid reason for their frustration. It would be nice if they could park outside. Well, here's what you gotta do. You gotta buy a second car, and then the next time the doctor gives us their parking spot, you gotta fucking take that parking spot with a car and then never drive it again. That's it. You just got to buy another car. It's the only... Because here's the thing. I know it's frustrating. There's like a shared resource and you're like, I need it right now. And somebody else is like, I also need it right now. And you're like, well, fuck. <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's how it works at the library of parking. If somebody signed out 12 rules for life, then, you know, your ass has got to go across town and, get, you know, go to the Dunbar location or something. I reached a breaking point this weekend. Mom had been home alone all day and she was in tears when I got home from work. Wife was away visiting friends. She said the baby had been screaming all day long. It was still crying when I came home. I went and knocked on Bill and Annie's door to ask if they could quieten the baby. Excuse me, Bill and Annie. Perchance could you quieten the baby? I could see through the frosted glass that Annie was sat at the bottom of the stairs, not even trying to calm the baby down. I got a little snapshot of their life and extrapolated that out to the rest of the day. She was urinating, not even actively spending 24 hours a day trying to silence their own child. When she came to the door, she apologized and said she'd been trying to calm baby down, but the new medication was making him constipated and he was straining to poo. She had Bill she had Bill had gone to pick up an emergency prescription to try and help. I snapped as she clearly hadn't been trying, as she was on the stairs, and I told her they need to be more considerate of others. And if they didn't quieten the baby, I would log a noise complaint with the police. Excuse me, uh, knock, knock, knock. Mr. and Mrs. Simmons, um, I had reports that there's a crying baby here. We're going to need you to uh, quieten the baby if possible. 
What do you think they, they're going to do? Like, what are the police going to do for the baby? You really think that's going to help out the situation with two strangers coming to the baby's room? <laughs> that are like, hey, sir, sir, <laughs> quiet down, sir, calm down. Annie was upset and closed the door in my face. When my wife came back, she told her what I had said. Now my wife is angry with me as I was making life difficult for a young couple with a sick baby and is giving me the silent treatment. I feel like I may be in the wrong because of how my wife reacted. But at the same time, the baby is always crying, dude. They need to be more considerate of their neighbors. We go through this all the time, okay? This, this comes up a lot. There's a, it's okay to be frustrated, but you have to think logically about whether it's okay to act on your frustration. Like, people get frustrated by completely reasonable shit every day. If your neighbor is mowing his lawn at 9 a.m. on a Sunday and you normally get up at 10, you can be frustrated. Do you have a case to go over to his house and say, hey, could you do it at 11 next time? My personal opinion, 9 a.m. is kind of open season. I might even say 8 a.m. is open season, but I don't want to get too many minus twos. But everybody's got their own limits for that. But there's a couple of things we talk about. If you live in like a shared environment, you do have to be as considerate as possible of your noise that is preventable, but you also have to be very accommodating for the noise of other people that is reasonable. Something that, not even babies, because I know you're going to be like, this is parental take. So one thing that annoys me, you know, we have like a, a next door sort of like social network thing for our building, and you'll see shit on there that's like, hey, there's a barking dog on like the seventh floor. And I'm like, what do you want? strata council to do fucking like knock down the door and be like be quiet it's a dog it's like putting up a sign that says dogs can't pee here well like fucking watch them go like they you can't stop them so like sometimes yeah i get annoyed i like hear i'm like man i wish that dog would stop barking then i remember like it's a dog and i'm like okay i guess i'll just be frustrated and be like life sucks for a little bit but i'll get over it same thing with like like babies everybody Nobody likes to hear a baby cry, for the record, but there is, like, legitimately, like, nothing you could do. If your kid's, like, three and they're holding a temper tantrum or, or throwing a temper tantrum, there's stuff you can do. I've, I've grabbed my two-year-old and then taken them out of a store. But at the same time, like, a, an infant, there's nothing you could do. They simply don't respond to reason. They don't know what you're saying. You, you can't reason with them. All, all you've got is, you've got like a bottle of milk and you got like a snack and maybe you got like a toy. And you, you cycle, you're like milk? Toy, snack, snack and milk, snack and toy, toy and milk, clean diaper. Like you don't know what it's like to have uh, 12 teeth cutting through your gums at any given moment. I'm just saying this. I guess what I'm trying to say is I have some sympathy for the fact that it's frustrating to deal with a crying baby because fucking I uh, deal with a crying baby. It's my baby. It's probably less frustrating when it's your baby, but it's still fucking annoying. You think you, it's awesome to wake up at like 3.30 a.m. To, to the worst alarm clock of all time when you were also up at 1 and 11? This shit is garbage. No one would sign up for that deal if, if evolution hadn't tricked us. You just got to, you know, if, if you're the neighbor, you got to put in like a damn, put in some earbuds or something like that or move to a detached house. I know it's not that simple, but like, you know, it's a way of the damn world. And then you, you look the other way when the baby's crying and I look the other way when it's a fucking random Thursday and you got divorced. So you're playing EDM at 110 decibels at 2.30 a.m. for some reason. It's the, it's the way community living works. You wouldn't look the other way? No, I would definitely, I would knock on the door. I wouldn't call the police, but I would knock on the door. I feel like a withering glance from a neighbor is, is more effective than a, than a police noise complaint. At least for like an adult. If they're in college or something, maybe the police are more effective. 
But if you're like the same age as the person that you're noise complaining, complaining, and you're like, really, brother? Like we're the we're, we're fucking we were in the same second grade class. Your ass is out here drinking alone, listening to EDM on your speakers at three a.m. What what happened? Knock it off. Anyway, quiet in that music. They, I don't even need to read the comments. They're obviously they're just they're they're just insane. Am I the asshole for not buying Christmas gifts for my five-year-old nephew, but will buy it for all other nieces and nephews? Why does this always happen? Wait a minute. How about this? Am I the asshole for, not, for including my coworker in Secret Santa when she clearly does not want to be in it? Now, this is a good one for me because I need to ask you some clarifying questions. If you add your coworker in the Secret Santa, doesn't that fuck up like the whole rotation? Isn't that one of those things where everybody like needs two dance partners? I hate buying gifts. I would puke if this happened to me. I'm like a pure ass gift giver for sure. I don't know if Kate's still in chat, but she'll tell you like every year for Christmas, I don't get her like a bowling ball like Homer Simpson, but around like the end of November, early December, I'm like, hey, I need to get you a Christmas gift. And then she, to her credit, I actually think it works pretty well because she's like, okay, here's something I want. And then I get it for her, which is great because it takes the guesswork out of it. It's not, admittedly, it's not romantic. It's like purely like fulfilling a transaction essentially, but it works for us. I, but I, and as much as that makes me sound bad, let me make myself sound worse. I think I'm actually worse as a gift receiver than as a gift buyer. Because as a gift receiver, I'm useless. I am devoid of material wants. So whenever someone is like, hey, I need to get you something for Christmas, I'm like, I don't really even like buy myself anything. Like I buy myself food. And that's basically it. I don't, I, don't, I don't buy like a lot. I don't buy a lot of media or like, you know, I'm not into fashion or anything like that. I'm just, so I, that's why even my parents end up getting me like, you know, Subway gift cards and stuff like that. <laughs> but I'm like, most of the time, spousal gifts a little different. But for anybody that's not literally like my spouse, I'm like, I would actually, don't be mad, but I would actually be happier if you didn't get me anything. Because if you get me something, I'm going to then feel compelled to have to get you something and I don't want anything and I hate buying gifts. So like you basically, by getting me a gift, you've actually given me like two, and I know how this sounds, but you've created two very, very mildly unpleasant things for me, which is okay Tis the season, but like, now I got to go out and I got to be like, what do I get for my uncle who I haven't fucking seen since 2013? I'm like, I don't know. I'm not saying nobody should exchange gifts. I'm just saying there's a different, I'm not, I'm not Ebenezer Scrooge. I, I love, I'm, it's the most wonderful time of the year. I'm just, I would actually genuinely, I would be happier Buying someone a gift and not receiving one in return. But people don't believe me, and I understand why they don't believe me. Because if someone said that to me, I would be like, yeah, right. You're trying to trick me into not getting you a gift so that I like owe you a favor for the rest of my life. Of course, you gave me a gift, I gotta get, there's no way I'm not getting you a gift. No, no, you don't get me a gift. You don't get me a gift, and I, I will get you a gift. Anyway, it's okay. It's just, I, my ideal Christmas arrangement would be, like, again, people you're very close with, gift exchange. Otherwise, at family Christmases, children under the age of 14 receive presents from 
parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles. Everybody over the age of 14, two glasses of white wine and a meal that somebody else cooked for you. And that would be a beautiful, that would be my ideal holiday experience, I think. Not me and my, my great uncle exchanging $20 HMV gift cards to each other for no reason, letting that shit rot in our wallet for the next 10 years. Or so I always love socks, yeah. I, I give like a use socks, underwear, workout towels. Anyway, regardless. Am I the, so we, we got lost in the sauce a little bit there. Am I the asshole for including my coworker in Secret Santa when she clearly does not want to be in it? My work has seven female employees, including the two bosses. That's pretty based. Needless to say, we're all very close. That's not needless to say. That is... You need to say that. I would not assume that just because there were seven women working together, they were all friends. I'm sexist. I would assume that they, are, they all talk shit about each other behind each other's backs. I'm, I'm problematic like that. I think it needed to be stated. We interact with each other on the daily, even hanging out outside of work. My F20, wait, but you're literally talking shit about their back right, or behind them, about them behind their back right now, now that I think about it. <laughs> I, I knew it, I knew it. This confirms my, my problematic biases. My F26 coworker, 45, had a bad experience with last year's Secret Santa. Yo! Kate's mom got me a Christmas gift. Check it out. It sucks. She knows me. Canadian they do say Canada on them, too. Oh, it's uh, cold. The, it is? The baby shark shoes. Yeah. Our daughter's baby shark shoes. Your two year old shoes, yeah. I looked inside. Guess what? It was in there. Cat vomit? Yeah. Oh, no. But it's like literally, I don't even know. I think Tomo might have like assassinated. Like, I hate you. Bah! Like that. <laughs> no. Yeah. He's just that's the, the opening of the baby shoe is like like a size of a loony. Yeah. How did he like Tomo he that? I don't know if Tomo has the executive function to choose where he throws up. He just go I just sees like a in the middle. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna clean that. You probably put him in the washer. It's not like they can really shrink their baby shoes. Very well worn. <clears throat> we had split Secret Santa into three weeks for the last three weeks of December. Week one, trinket. Week two, trinket. Week three, final gift exchange and staff dinner. This company is not going to last through the bear market. This is a company that can only exist in near zero interest rate environments. You are not getting any work. Uh, December, you got three, three weeks of Secret Santa? This shit sounds exhausting, man. I would accept one for sure. That you know, it's December. Take a long lunch, exchange gifts. It's festive, but like once a week for three weeks is crazy. Also, where do you buy trinkets? I don't know. <laughs> it's the weasel pigeon. Thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Like I know where to get like a like a main like what this is, Secret Santa is what like under thirty bucks, under fifty bucks. You can go to like uh, Bed Bath & Beyond or something like that. You can get somebody like a candlestick. Where, where are you getting trinkets? I don't understand. 50 bucks? I, listen, I'm in Canada. Inflation's 10%. Canadian dollars at uh, 1.37 USD. You can't buy shit for like... I know people are saying under 20 bucks. You cannot buy anything for under $20 in Canada. You could buy lunch for one person or possibly an adult and a child. <laughs> At least in Vancouver. Hey, Mariko L., thank you as well. Thank you. Here's my... Everyone's like so into giving gifts. Then all of a sudden they're like 50 bucks. Ooh, that's too much. If you're getting a $50 gift in return... You're giving $50 and you're getting $50. Oh, it you'd rather have that extra $30 difference to get something for yourself? Ergo, my problem with the gift-giving experience unsolicited. You're making my point for me. A $50 gift I don't want? 
so you, you're preaching to the choir. We never disagree with you? Okay, then why am I yelling? Um, this year, it was, sorry, her first two gifts came the following week, which ruined her experience of looking for her. It's a fucking scavenger hunt? Is it fucking stomp? She's, she's got to find her gift as well? Of looking for her gift and waiting for it to appear during the designated week. She also felt her final gift was below budget and not thought out a wallet. As everyone was having their own experience, admittedly, we didn't notice how bad hers was. This year, October, we selected the names for Secret Santa. That is when she told everyone about her experience, how terrible it was, mentioning multiple times to different people and saying she does not want to be involved this year. In charge, I still put her name in the generator. Okay. I would say this is the first misstep. <laughs> I didn't listen to all that, but uh, sorry that happened to you or congratulations or whatever. Me and one of the bosses hoping to persuade her as we made a rule in the generator, her and her past Santa would not get each other. It did not work. What do you mean? The rule didn't work or she didn't have a good time? Because if the rule didn't work, you got you to gotta work on your back end, I think. Also, why do you have a secret Santa generator? Whatever happened, it, it would just... Cutting up. Also, it's not Secret Santa if you know who she got. Can't you just cut up a piece of paper and write names on it and, and draw them out of a hat? There's seven people at the office. You're telling me they need a generator for Secret Santa? It's just getting too... We're too 21st century, man. We forgot about the, the mundane pleasures of the 90s. Instead, I asked her to show me who she got and, to, and decided to get the gifts for both her and my original person without telling her Santa that she was not participating. This was done so she could still receive a gift without having to put in the effort. I know we're going back to a callback here. Is nothing getting done at the office? You're overcomplicating the... It's just supposed to be a nice little diversion from the banality of the day. Now you got it turned into like a damn, it's a heist movie. Late November, after people started buying gifts, she made a comment stating she still does not only, that she does not only does she not want to be, that not only does she not want to be a part of it, but if she gets a gift, she will leave it there at work. There is no way that she would not receive a gift. Either I would have three secret Santas or the bosses would still get her a gift. What is happening? I, I don't understand. <laughs> it would be terrible for the next three weeks for all to be excited about a surprise, surprise gift, knowing she's not involved or receiving. Her past Santa would feel guilty and not be able to enjoy the festivities. We would feel awkward brandishing gifts with her right here. The final brunch would be weird after we closed work. It's a, it's a brunch too? I know, I just keep getting more surprised by the logistics. That shit starts at like 10 a.m. on a work day? I thought it was like a, maybe like a 1 p.m. office lunch or something. Nothing's getting, nobody's getting anything done, man. This is crazy. The fine, and also I know that we've, we've been through this before. Stop me if I've said that 10 times today. But this is the classic like person who honestly says, I don't want to receive a gift. People are like, I heard all that, but I don't want you to feel weird. If you didn't want me to feel weird, you would respect my wishes and you would not get me a gift. If everybody's opening presents and I'm sitting there, I'm fucking, I'm an adult. I can see someone open a present and not be like, oh, I wish that was me. Most of the time, I'm like, I'm glad it's not me. <laughs> I'm glad. When I'm at a restaurant and someone's getting happy birthday sung to them, I'm like, damn, dude, I'm, I'm glad as hell it's not my birthday today. I'm not going to feel weird. I will feel totally normal. If you get me a gift, I would also like pretend to feel normal too. But I, like, I don't like when people sing like happy birthday to me either. When I, when I worked at that office in Korea, 
My contract was like November to November. My birthday is in November. So it was like two days before I left for home. All these people I'm never going to see again sing me happy birthday. And I've sung happy birthday to like 27 people I'm never going to see again either. What a waste of, of our limited time on planet Earth. They don't, and without, I'm not saying that this makes them bad people. They don't care about me. They're, they're not, it's, I'm never going to see them again. Abigail teacher from Dajon, who I've, I've exchanged three words with in the 12 months that I worked here, she doesn't give a shit whether I have a happy birthday. I mean, if you put a gun to her head, she'd probably be like, I'd rather he have a happy birthday than a bad birthday, but she doesn't really care. It's not like she's racking her brain, like, how can I make... And, and why should she? We're strangers. It's the same way when it's her birthday, I'm like, yeah, I mean, I guess in principle, I hope she has a nice day. But like, it's not like I'm, I'm going to get anything for her. I'm just going to sing the song and let her take the first piece of cake or whatever. <laughs> not everyone feels the way you do. Yeah, but everybody that doesn't feel the way I feel, they'd sing the happy birthday for them. It's not for me. It wouldn't be that bad. And by the way, I had a happy birthday sung to me when it was my birthday on the cruise. I was having a great time. I wore, I wore a tie all day that said, it's my big day. Our room had a, a, a magnet on it that said, it's my 34th birthday. I was living it up. I was being festive. But those are, I was getting a happy birthday from my family at the table. Not from my coworkers who like, I mean, honestly, it's been 12 years. I couldn't pick them out of a lineup now. It's a different story. Like it's in, when people have to sing happy birthday versus like when they choose. Anyway, just let her not have a present. Like what's the problem? I understand her stance. But at the same time, I feel like we should be free to ignore it so that everyone can enjoy the festivities. My thoughts have even gone so far as thinking she is selfish because she knows how small work is and how it will impact the holiday season for her to not receive a fucking a soap Oh, liquid soap holder that says soap on it. A ceramic soap bottle you pour liquid soap into that says soap on it. It has like a little olive or something. Just accepting the gifts graciously is fine because we're only doing it to make her feel included. She wants to be excluded. She wants... <laughs> she literally said, don't include me. What's wrong with you? You're not listening. And we're going to, hey, I know you had a bad time last year. You don't want to do it this year. We're going to force you to do it this year to make it up to you. We aren't forcing her to buy anyone a gift. That's even worse, man. Because now she's going to get a gift and have not given a gift to anybody else. So now if you were worried about making her feel awkward, her ass is going to feel awkward because she's receiving a gift, but she didn't pay it forward. She's going to feel like a freeloader or she, at least she's going to feel like you guys think she's a freeloader. As her gym partner... And someone who hangs out with her outside of work, I could never receive a gift and be excited to talk to her about it, knowing she can't enjoy it as well. And she'd have two bad Christmases at work, but maybe I'm being selfish. You've lost your damn mind. You've, you've gone insane. It is so s simple to just listen to another person for something so minor as this. And be like, I don't want to be a part of it. And be like, that's okay. I respect that. Maybe I disagree with it, but I respect that you're also an adult with, you know, an adult mind and, and you can make a different choice to me and it'll be okay. She does have a terminal case of Christmas. Anyway, I mean, like, I, it's not that big of a deal. It's just like, I just don't understand why you're not listening to her. Like, it's crazy. She's just chilling. Just let her enjoy her life. I don't understand the problem. I mean, I'm trying to think. When I worked in an office in, in Canada, I enjoyed being a team player. I brought stuff to the potlucks. And you know what? I ate stuff at the potlucks. Can I tell you? Even though, 20, I wouldn't say I was a picky eater, but more picky than I am now. I would eat some shit at the potlucks that I didn't even think I would like at all. But I'm sitting next to the person who made it. So you know I'm getting some potato salad. You know I'm getting, so they're all salads. Pasta salad, potato salad, etc., etc. 
And then you eat it and you go, wow, Lori, this is delicious. Because it's fucking, you're all spending seven hours a day checking your damn email over and over. You know, just anything to get the neurotransmitters pumping and get some happy chemicals. You know, you today, you, tomorrow, me. If Lori was like, don't eat the pasta salad, I'd be like, why? <laughs> what'd you do to the Lori? What'd you do to the pasta salad? But I would listen to her. I wouldn't eat the pasta salad because even if it sounds like an insane request, you know, I respect where it's coming from. You're the asshole. Enforced fun is not fun. If she doesn't want to take part, you should have left her out. Yeah, but... You're the asshole. Secret Santa sucks because people often say it's voluntary. Then there still ends up being situations like this. Can I tell? I, I think this is a very unpopular take. I can only tell you that this is coming from a genuine place for me. I find Yankee Swap more fun than Secret Santa because Yankee Swap has like gameplay. Secret Santa is like, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I, this is what I wanted. Thank you. Yankee Swap is like, I wonder what the fuck is in that one. I'm taking the I'm taking the medium I'm giving up my big box to take a medium sized box because the big boxes are always disappointing. I've never heard it called Yankee Swap. Yankee Swap is is a white elephant, where like there's a pile of gifts and then the first person takes a gift and then the second person chooses whether they want to take a different gift or if they want to swap their gift with someone else at the table. Or at the, at the event. It doesn't have to be at a table, I guess. And I, I think people are like, it's bad because it could like hurt feelings if you get a great gift stolen from you. I'm like, no, that's why it's fun. Because nobody knows who's going to get the gift. So you're not like trying to soul read them and be like, oh, do they want a deck of cards with minions on it? Or do they want like a bottle of perfume from Shopper's Drug Mart, right? Instead, you're just like, fucking send it. What, what box do you think looks the best? Sorry, my chair is getting squeaky as hell, man. There's always one guy who brings something cool. Well, that's the office one. Is like, doesn't Michael give Ryan an iPad or an iPod? Back when the iPods were the top of the line, everybody else bought like you know a deck of playing cards and a five dollar gift certificate attached to it. I remember the, the first time I played Yankee Swap was in sixth grade. I remember, I, some, this is, I swear to you, it's true. I was in the position of power. On last swap, it was me. And I said, I'm going to take uh, Danielle's because it's the biggest box. And everybody was like, whoa, he's, he got the big box. And I remember the person who bought it was like, you don't really want the big box. And I cracked that shit open. And it was like just an outrageously large novelty pencil like that you couldn't even write with. It was like a pencil you had to hold in your hand like this. And I was like, you know what? I was owned, but also I think that gave me a new respect for the game. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I, I have to apologize to you. I wasn't familiar with your game. I thought this was a big box must be the, the best gift. I didn't realize You got to go with a medium-sized box. Maybe. I don't know. We should do a Yankee swap. It's just being harassed into spending more money at a time of year when money's already tight and inflation is killing everyone. Also, that you can buy someone you barely know or may not even like something they probably don't even want. Yeah, that's true. I do want to say there's a caveat here that, like, it's, it can be fun. The way I always thought about stuff like this when I worked at an office was, like, yeah, I got to spend like 20 bucks to buy Susan, who I know nothing about, like a little tchotchke or whatever. But then we get to have like an extra 45 minutes at lunch one day where we all get to actually like socialize with each other. So, it's, I mean, it's, it's kind of a shit deal, but at least you're, you're getting like something out of it on the back end. But I can understand not everybody thinks it's, it's I mean, I don't think it's that fun, but I think it's, you know, I'm just not that serious about the secret Santa, I guess. Forced personal events at work are unprofessional and toxic. People should be given the choice to say no. 
by all means, run extra events and invite people, but this is not her job. Okay, true, so t true, but like, come on. Hey, all right, let's do it. Hey, you're the asshole. Do you typically force your holiday things on everyone or just your coworkers? Even if the company is tiny, you can't do that. Especially a trinket one week, real gift the next, then dinner. What are you trying to court them or something? You'll be lucky to get a homemade car from me. Shit, you'll be lucky if I text my coworkers anything related to happy. I'd be lucky if you shut your damn mouth, dusty mother. I don't even know who you are. You speak to me like this? Well, you're not speaking to me. You're speaking to me. That lady might be crazy. You don't have to be this mean in response. This is too much. Can't you just write like you're crazy? Lol. <laughs> Can't you just write something withering like La Mal lady you really thought or something like that? That would be so much more effective than this like millennial manifesto or something like that. Any not the assholes in here? No, none? Okay. Did you just say dead ass, little bro? If you had to choose one, oh wait, you don't have to. With HelloFresh, you get fresh ingredients and easy to follow. That's not an am I the asshole? There's a lot of not the assholes. I don't respect these. Oh, man. dude, okay, this is a rehash. I'd like to apologize. Am I the asshole for not allowing my sister-in-law's kids to bring their own food to Christmas at my home? What is wrong with people in Christmas? You know what I realize is that, like, some people, um, and I don't think it's, like, a majority, but there's a lot of them. Some people are like up against the walls of life all the time. They have no flexibility. If the current changes, there's going to be conflict. Again, I don't know if Kate's in chat. I'm, I'm on the middle of a, a damn inner tube on the world's widest water slide. And I'm not saying I never get annoyed or offended. But like if I was hosting Christmas dinner and... Somebody like that was part of my family that was coming to Christmas dinner was like, hey, I don't want to eat your turkey. I'm going to eat like 12 Snickers instead. I would be like, get it, brother. Wouldn't be my choice, but like you're always welcome at the table. The idea, and we haven't even read the post yet, but we had one of these like a month ago. But like the idea that you have to eat what everyone else is eating on Christmas makes it seem like it's like a shared torture. Like, if the food is good, why should you care if somebody's choosing to eat something else? Are you worried somebody else is going to look at the, the food that you're eating instead of Christmas dinner? And they're going to be like, oh, I should have brought, you know, like a mini pizza or something like that. Then maybe next year we should just cook 12 mini pizzas. That would be easy, too. I'll get a, a, a probably do them in the air fryer, but I could get a toaster oven if I got to. What's the problem? I just don't understand the issue. Anyway, I, F31, am going to be honesting Christmas. I'm going to be hosting the Christmas celebration this year. The menu is usual, and everyone's familiar with it. Maybe that's your problem. Maybe you've got to add in a little haute cuisine there. Maybe you got to... You ever think about adding some... Uh, wait, what's the hot food right now? I've been eating at a lot of family restaurants with... Reasonable prices in large portions. I haven't. <laughs> is, there a, is there a big cocktail coming off? I'm still stuck in uh, Moscow Mules. I think that's like 2015. Tapas are back again. I'm old. This is my second run around the tapas uh, cycle. Broccolini? You know what? That's damn true. I've been eating some broccolini lately. IPAs are falling off. What about Aperol Spritz? Are they still popping? Sloppy steaks. Brussels sprouts coming back again. Let's go. For many of us, they never left, though. Anyway, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> Shawarma? Excuse me, is this Tony Stark at the end of the first Avengers movie? 
My sister, I'm just saying she should have added maybe like a little bit of spice to the menu and then maybe people wouldn't be bringing their own shit. My sister-in-law's kids are what they call the most vicious picky eaters out there. Mind you, they're six and nine and are probably just being deliberately difficult to their parents. They're just little kids. I'm going to stop you right there. I'm not taking their side. I'm just saying if you think that the, the children have enacted a conspiracy to uniquely harm you, they're just little kids. They're just living their lives. Sister-in-law called to inform me she will be bringing food for her kids to eat at Christmas dinner. I asked why. She said they will not be able to eat anything from the menu after looking at it. I said, I'm sorry, but there isn't enough space at the table for extra meals. There's enough space for the children to have a plate. Unfortunately, there's only enough space for turkey, potatoes, mashed sweet potatoes with marshmallows broiled on top of them, uh, cranberry sauce, gravy, stuffing, dinner rolls, corn, carrots, roasted green beans, pumpkin pie, ice cream, fresh fruit salad, and sparkling apple cider. We couldn't, we couldn't possibly shove anything to the side to make space for four dinosaur chicken nuggets and a handful of frozen french fries. It's not possible. Besides, your kids should start learning. This is where you took it one step too far, lady. Besides, your kids should start learning to be more tolerant to some foods, especially at family holiday gatherings where it's expected for everyone to just eat what's in front of them without complaining. That is, you've taken it a step too far. I'm starting to think that you wanted the host so that you got the hoster's mantle, which means you, get the, you feel like you've got the position to say stuff like this. She went on about how difficult kids can be. Mostly can't relate, but I get it. No, you fucking don't. You, you literally said you don't get it. Dummy? I'm the, which is fine, but you gotta just have like some... I mean, again, just don't make an unforced error. She should still keep in mind that it's probably a passing phase for them. Listen, I don't know fucking anything about kids, but I'm gonna guess that this is a phase and the exact right time for them to get over that would be Thanksgiving dinner. Or, sorry, Christmas dinner. Let's ruin the holidays by, by picking a fight with my six-year-old and my nine-year-old on what's supposed to be a happy day. She said, I don't get it, and that she doesn't want them to stay hungry or feed on snacks. I apologize and declined. My husband got involved in this and is saying I'm being inconsiderate towards my guests. He said, I lose nothing by allowing them to bring food I disagree with. This is not part of my plans, and if anything, it should be a teachable moment. They're applying pressure on me, saying I'll ruin the celebration if I keep trying to die on this hill. You're the asshole. It's not your place to provide a teachable moment. Get a yes, um, okay, I'm, listen. I think I've overloaded on asshole takes for this am I the asshole. If there isn't someone bashing picky eaters, you're dead. Why are you criticizing this person? Because I mostly criticize picky eaters who are, like, over the age of 25. This is a six-year-old and a nine-year-old nine-year-old kid. I'm not. And the other thing is, I do still think that you know they're at the age where you should start to try to introduce them to like new foods and and force their hand a little bit. But the, I don't think you should do it at like Christmas dinner in front of a bunch of strangers. I think you got to build that scaffolding like at home where you can be like fucking try it, try it. You can't do it at Christmas dinner where you got to be like, could you could you just eat a spoonful? You gotta, you gotta do that in your own arena. It's gotta be a home game. You don't just spring them on every Christmas dinner. That's like, hey, it's your first game in the NBA. Suit up. You're playing starting small forward in the game seven of the NBA finals. Like, you gotta... You gotta give them some time in the training camp first. Okay, slash Mark.